Greetings and welcome to 13 Nights of Halloween! <laughs> No, this is not yet another sequel to the Friday the 13th movies. This is actually a haunted attraction called Jason's Woods, and it's located in Pennsylvania. But it's a far drive away from Terror Behind the Walls, so if you were hoping that maybe you could go on a little road trip to Pennsylvania and hit both Terror Behind the Walls and Jason's Woods, not very realistic. But my girlfriend and I did have a chance to go see just that attraction this weekend, and as a matter of fact, we only really got to see the hayride portion, and that's what I'm going to be talking about. Next year, hopefully, my friend Mike and I will be able to return to this and hit all the attractions, which is a costly endeavor. It's like 45 bucks. But for now, let's talk about this awesome hayride adventure. First of all, if you go on a Saturday night as we did, it's going to take you a long time to get in. You're standing on line to pay for a considerable amount of time. And I can't really account for how long the lines are after you get past the ticket booth. Because we were just fortunate enough to hit a very short line once we got to the hayride. I don't know that the hayride is actually the first thing that you hit if you hit all the attractions. But since it was our only attraction, we got to it right away. But as I said before, we were out there for a long time. It is a little cold, so dress very, very warm. And there's a live band that plays, which is cool, but if you really don't want to hear it, it's, it's going to be tough because at one point, the line actually moves right in front of the stage. But if you don't mind loud music and you don't mind watching constant clips of the DVD compilation Boogeyman, probably won't bother you, and I would say that this ride is worth the wait anyway. Word of caution, though, the actors are going to get as close to you as possible. Some may even touch you a little bit. Some people really don't like that, so you may want to consider what may happen. It's not the kind of touching that they do on Bane or even in some other haunted attractions, but it's still getting up in your face pretty close. And there is one particular part that can be kind of gross. Let's just say you will get wet on this ride. There's a lot of open woods, no pun intended, so... This ride really focuses on darkness and what you can't see as well as having some pretty impressive animatronics and some pretty cool pyrotechnics, though nowhere near the extent that we saw at Headless Horseman last year, or, well, Headless Horseman two years ago and Bates Motel last year. But still, there's some pretty impressive pyrotechnics, and the sound effects are used extremely well. Not to mention, they do have a lot of props that drop at you. They do pretty good at directing your attention away at one thing, and then, meanwhile, someone sneaking up behind you. In fact, one of the stronger points about this haunt is that in the hayride, they actually keep the steps up the entire time. The steps that you use to get on the hayride are the same steps that actors will use to sneak up on you. You'll be sitting in the back of the thing thinking that, oh, none of the acting's going to happen in the back. Of course, if you have experience with haunted rides, you know that's not the case at all, but... A lot of people hang out in the back thinking they're going to be safe. But then along comes an actor who's actually able to jump on the hayride while it's still in motion and scare the crap out of everybody. That I thought was pretty cool. Although my poor girlfriend was rather scared. Which, by the way, this does make for a good date night. And it helps that the staff is extremely very friendly and very willing to help you out. So I would recommend this one. Though, if you have to travel very far... I would say save up your money and probably go do the whole thing. I mean, uh, this haunted attraction wasn't too far away from where my girlfriend lives, so that made it convenient for us. But if you got to travel far, I would say do the whole thing, and let me know if it was any good, because I'm wondering what the other attractions were like. They were looking pretty scary. That said, this isn't certainly the best haunted hayride I've gone on, and that's only because the ones that... My friend Mike and I have gone to in the past have just been so superb. Headless Horseman and Bates Motel. If you haven't heard my review of Bates Motel, check it out because that hayride is just amazing. Well, hoping to get yet another podcast up three in one night because uh, the last two nights I haven't been able to get anything up. But hopefully this will be the last time that happens and I'll get back on track and 
everybody can continue to enjoy 13 Nights of Halloween.